I'm in my throwing a boy look together out of random items from my suitcase era. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Bro Seeking, and welcome back to Hat or Rat. And today we're going to be reviewing the drag and drama of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15, Reunited. All 16 of our Season 15 cast members gathered together one last time to discuss Golden Boots, do a little loser's bracket reading challenge, discuss unresolved conflict from the season between queens like Lucy and Lux. So we'll be breaking all of that down as well as hot or rotting their looks as we go through each queen and taking a look at some drama that bubbled up over the past week involving the ongoing feud between Trinity the Tuck and Lux Nora London, an interview where Princess Poppy talks about wanting to fade into obscurity and explaining what was going on between Bob and Mistress Isabel Brooks and the diss tracks they dropped for each other just a couple days ago. Plus digging through all the tweets from the queens concerning what they really thought about their reunion appearance. So buckle up, because first up we're getting teleported to Mars with Irene Dubois. And she in this reunion is in her screen time era, which she's not afraid to admit, and honestly props to her for speaking up as much as she did and really grabbing the camera's focus. Like for example, Irene calling out Selena for having a fake accent. To which Selena replies, okay white girl, and this this moment is kind of brushed under the rug. Like, there was no further conflict there, but it was clear Selena was bothered. And I was mostly just confused by this, but someone on Reddit apparently dug up this video of Selena from several years ago where she's speaking without her signature Selena Estetis accent. I started doing drag because my best friend decided to like, you know, do drag as a career, and he started out at Project Drag two seasons ago, Marta Beat You. And honestly, I don't really know what to make of this. I mean, I guess Tatiana is forever right. What you see isn't always the truth, but like drag is drag and drag is fake. Like <laughs> this compared to like what I look like as Bussy Queen, I mean, completely different people. And you know, it's not a total stretch of the imagination to imagine that your created character speaks a little bit differently than you might speak out of drag. Plus it does seem these two were able to work out their dispute sometime after the reunion. A Twitter user wrote addressing Irene, Irene, I've had enough, shut up. You want TV time so bad. Where Irene replied, I'm sorry. They asked me to add more comments during the breaks. And this same user responded to Irene Irene writing by commenting to a POC queen about an accent, that's not a good look. Irene then wrote, I don't disagree. And Malaysia Baby Doll Fox later chimed into this thread writing her and Selena discussed it off camera and all is well. Enjoy the reunion, my love. And then near the end of the reunion, Irene leaves Mistress and Lucy gagging a little bit for sure. Rue asks them if they have anything else they want to get off their chest. And Irene brings up to Mistress that she wants to know the truth about what Mistress told her Irene concerning what Lucy Laduca had told Mistress about Irene. Oh, say that to them fast. Apparently Mistress had told Irene that Lucy told Mistress that it didn't look like Irene had fillers, but rather the opposite and that her face was sagging. And Lucy confirms right then and there that she absolutely did not say that. But Mistress doesn't admit to anything either and instead says that she's a lot of things, but not a liar. So I guess the jury is like still out on this one, but um, this cast absolutely needed somebody like Irene to keep the bigger personalities in check throughout the season. I'll I'll just say that. And her look is absolutely matching the fierceness of her wit tonight. She's giving us a monochromatic white look that is maybe in a silicone or PVC that's been, I would guess, 3D printed here to create all of those spiky pieces and texture all up and down her entire outfit. She 100% is giving that evil supervillain from some alien planet touchdown to rage you to filth. And she'd do it before you even knew what happened to you. This look is absolutely five out of five hot flames. And next up, are you browsing the internet without a VPN? <gasps> Don't worry, I've got you covered with today's video sponsor and award-winning virtual private network, Surfshark. Download Surfshark VPN using the link in the description of this video. Then with just a click, connect to any one of their over 3,200 secure servers around the globe. When using Surfshark VPN, your internet browsing traffic becomes anonymous, encrypted, and private. And I love using Surfshark because they make the internet browsing experience so much easier with features like their clean web ad and pop-up blockers, which can even get rid of those annoying cookie questions you see all the time. And Surfshark can even keep you safe proactively, giving you helpful notifications when they notice you're visiting a website which may have been a recent victim of a data breach. And my all-time favorite Surfshark use case, unlocking geo-restricted content. With just one click, I can surf on over to Argentina and enjoy every single season of RuPaul's Drag Race and Untucked. But best of all, you can use Surfshark on all of your devices with unlimited device login. Plus, there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the description of my video 
video to get Surfshark today. And make sure to use code Bussy during checkout to get 83% off and three extra months of Surfshark for free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring today's video and keeping my browsing experience safe, secure, and and next up, Bible Girl walked so Princess Poppy could run. She's quitting drag on the big screen and we're welcome. And before we talk about her time in the reunion, I wanna give some context to her little intro line about quitting drag that you can find in a podcast and article written by Joey Nofi over on the Entertainment Weekly website. They did an exclusive interview with Princess Poppy who for the most part since season 15 has disappeared. And in the article, we learned the reason why is she quote, wants to take a step back from drag for the foreseeable future. She said, I want to fall off the face of the planet. I don't want to be famous. I want to fade into obscurity. And she goes on to talk about how people put too much emphasis on fame and its relation to success and ultimately says she plans to do her drag con appearance and then take her step back after that. But if I were a betting woman, I would place a bet that she probably is going to reconsider after she sees how positively this reunion appearance was received. She's wearing a look recreating the iconic, now iconic, Rebecca Glasscock entrance look from season one of RuPaul's Drag Race. And like, no, this isn't a good look or fashionable look, but this is 100% drag. Drag is like an art that constantly references itself and other pieces of pop culture. And considering the ironic importancy of the Rebecca Glasscock, Glasscock entrance look and what it meant looking back for the franchise, uh, this is a great look. Plus it's a total middle finger to the giant industrial machine that Drag Race has become demanding these queens wear couture garments all the time. I love it and this looks absolutely hot. And the other interesting thing about this look is that the concept may have been borrowed. Denali actually had tweeted back at the end of February that if her tweet got 10,000 likes, her entrance look when she went back on Drag Race would be Rebecca Glasscock's iconic entrance. Look. And Denali apparently noticed this, but wasn't at all bothered. She tweeted out, well, I'll be damned after the reunion aired. And then in reply, a Twitter user said that Poppy took the idea from Denali, but Denali wrote, no, I fully support this very iconic behavior. She also had a great read for Lucy LaDuca when she said, the rumors are true. I did give someone COVID. That's why all season long, Lucy LaDuca had no taste. <laughs> That was good. And if you were confused about why she said this or what rumors she was referring to, the gist of it is she had at a Roscoe's viewing party alluded to the fact that she may have been COVID positive when she was supposed to start filming for the show, but got around the requirements of testing by putting chapstick up her nose, which she later clarifies on Twitter didn't actually work for the test that Drag Race gave her and ultimately went through quite the ordeal apparently with doctors and the Drag Race team to make sure she wasn't actually positive. So considering all that, I'll let y'all debate in the comments below whether her read and joke about the chapstick and such were made in good taste. Next up, who has her baby? Anitra, apparently. The only thing that Mistress didn't steal from the set. Um, Amethyst did not have a lot of screen time in this reunion. And I wasn't sure originally if her parts had got edited out in favor of some of the higher placing queens or she didn't say very much, but Lux Noir London did clarify on Twitter that we quote, have to stop blaming production for everything. LMAO, the girls who weren't talking literally just weren't talking. But Amethyst seemed to disagree with this sentiment from Lux and wrote this on Twitter. It's really disappointing to me that in a two hour special dedicated to a cast of 16 queens, they could only find time to ask about a hookup I had a couple years ago that no one cares about. When I was barely being addressed, about 20% of what I said made the final edit. Once again, nothing about my music, nothing about my lip syncs, nothing about my drag journey. The issue isn't that I was quote, just sitting there because it's hard to compete with a handful of voices that are always speaking. The issue is that I wasn't being addressed, period. So that's that, but concerning her look, she says she doesn't stir the pot, she lights it on fire. Wink, wink. And this look is like a gray and black, dress, flowy dress, bodysuit combo thing with a raccoon puppet. And like, sure, the look is cute and silly, but this doesn't do a lot to me to make, I think, a bigger impact or say much about Amethyst's time on Drag Race or what she wants to do after. And overall, the look is not my favorite, so I'm gonna give this a rock. And next up, she's making her story. It's Robin Fierce, and she apparently now is the first drag queen to ever speak at Yale Law. You probably know that there is a lot of anti-drag 
ban stuff going around in conservative legislature. And Robin, as a form of activism and in protest, did Drag Queen Story Hour for, as she says, a room full of adults at Yale Law. And this leads into some great talking points about the bigger issues at hand here. Like at its core, all this drag ban stuff really is anti-trans, anti-queer, anti-LGBTQ, and it's an issue that even if you don't do drag, affects everyone in our community. And I love overall that the queens from the season in the franchise, RuPaul's Drag Race, has been pretty proactive about discussing this stuff and making the issues at hand visible, because that's really the first step in solving the problem. But on a lighter note, we also learned that Robin Pierce used to work at Best Buy in full drag. So Robin, thank you for sharing those photos. And Robin's look tonight is honestly not done justice by where she is placed in the seating arrangement, but in the full body shot, you can see how gorgeous she looks. It's like a red strappy vinyl look, very dancey, very sexy, kind of cyberpunk futuristic. I really love that she is showing off her full body. She says she actually didn't pad for this look and she made the look from head to toe. She looks fierce and this look is hot. I also wanna quickly remind you that my channel is made possible by viewers like you and patrons who support me every single month financially with a pledge at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. And in exchange for their patronage, they get exclusive patron benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to exclusive videos like reactions to RuPaul's Drag Race, and the ability to vote every single week in hottest hot polls and get their icons in my videos. And you can join my patrons at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That link is in the description. See you there. And next up, trouble, but make it double. It's sugar and spice. And sugar lets us know that she's in her nail era, but she's not wearing nails, she's wearing gloves. <laughs> And honestly, it was a little difficult to pin down these two's contribution to the reunion other than they made their presence known and I had a good time with them. Because most of what they were saying was just so true to their bubbly, airheaded characters. And like at one point, RuPaul even asked Spice if she was speaking English. Their looks though are absolutely what dreams were made of. They're giving a Lizzie McGuire movie fantasy, like that in shot with green and blue looks, but all done up in princess eleganza. And I love that they were just seated front and center because they just absolutely, I think, were some of the most polished and stunning looks tonight at the reunion. I just want to say these were great reunion looks because I think they 100% exemplified who the twins are as drag queens. Like they were even holding their little dolls the entire time. Totes iconic. And the looks are great references, talking points, and I'm sure we'll pay them dividends for years. These looks were hot. Next up, we notably learn she is getting married. It's Oromayari. Hopefully she is able to break the announcing your romantic partnership on Drag Race and it not ending well correctly though. Anyway, she was one of the queens tonight that I kind of wish we heard a little bit more from, but it seems she was having more fun observing. After the reunion, she tweeted out me smiling at the girls lying. And for her look, we have a little bit of a trend alert going on. Aura's moon must have been in retro shade because she's kind of matching Irene tonight in this monochromatic white look. I always love Aura's drag because it makes me think of The Matrix, one of my favorite movies. And she's got this very polished, futuristic, and signature style that you always know belongs to her. She looks great and this look is absolutely hot. Next up. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And she here in her look is giving us a little share from Clueless reference, an iconic drag staple, but updated and I think twisted a bit into the 60s references that Marsha likes to pull from. She's a sophisticated woman and I love that big giant campy tie combined with those more chic elements of like the coat. And overall, I think this look shows that Marsha has a more refined sense of self and fashion than maybe some of her looks from her time on Drag Race. I'm gonna give this look a and she did also announce during the reunion and on Twitter that she is launching a makeup line. Her makeup line apparently includes three different flavors of chapstick. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk? Next up, we have Malaysia Baby Doll Fonks revisiting Metalgate with RuPaul during the reunion. This was, you'll remember, when during a spicy untucked moment, Malaysia ended up saying that Lux and Mistress were bullies. And Malaysia here lets us know that she totally regrets calling the queens bullies. And the Drag Race Twitter also tweeted out the quote from Malaysia where she said, my biggest regret was calling them bullies. They are far from that. And Mistress quote tweeted this writing, I love you, Foxy Doll. That's my sister. Even when we want to each other out. And concerning her look, no surprise, she's giving us some pageant gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous gown glamour, complete with some crazy pink stoned cat ears. Those things look so cute and pretty. I don't know, I think there was like some Sailor Moon character with these ears on, I don't know their name. This was like a deep memory that she's unlocking for me, but this look is hot. 
it. And apparently the explanation for this look though, she said on Twitter, was she wore cat ears in a pageant gown because everyone was telling her that they were tired of seeing her in a pageant gown and cat ears. And next up, drum roll for the golden boot. So during the reunion, we have the now annual golden boot segment where Maddie Morphosis, the prior year's recipient of said golden boot, presents the three nominees for this year's golden boot awardee. And they are Marsha, Marsha, Marsha in her tie dye to die for runway. Jax in her tie dye to die for runway. And Selena for her metal street lamp runway. Have you all seen the photos of all the different queens wearing Selena's street lamp on their head? Iconic. And the Golden Boot ends up going to Selena, where she now joins Maddie and Lala Ri in the Golden Boot Hall of Fame. Anyways, though, Selena seems happy to have quote, finally won something on Drag Race, despite apparently having a bit of a tough time recently concerning her reception on the show. And that includes with judges like Ross and the fan base at whole. Ross Matthews, you can eat She actually tweeted out after this reunion, logging off for the night. I feel like complete sh after taping and for my mental health, I don't need to be back in that space. Love you, Lil Nips, going back to my cage. Concerning her look. I loved it. Her look is a reference to the Tuong Fu character Chi Chi Rodriguez at the end of their story arc when they reach that full pageantry drag fantasy. And she, yes, is a crystallized glamazon ready for the runway. And I think this was an especially smart reference to make considering the topic of the movie and spreading the love and joy of drag in the current political climate that we're in. Plus, it's probably one of my favorite things that she's worn and I think definitely redeemed her golden boot. This look is absolutely hot. And next up, quick reminder, if you haven't let Loose today? What are you doing? Pause the video and let loose. Let loose. <laughs> Anyways, Lucy's segment in the reunion starts off with a cameo from Kevin Bacon. And after that, Rue highlights how viral Lucy's Let Loose song has gotten recently. And Sugar asks us all to consider the international implications of letting loose, something scientists are reportedly still working on. Feverishly. Anyways, concerning Lucy's look, she's giving us a more realized Lucy Laduca. Her hair is big and kind of tapping into, I think, that classic drag glamour that we see mistress's hair often exist in. And her look is made up of loud colors, pink, yellow, and stark white with a cape and a really pretty collar. And overall, what I loved most was how balanced her look was when you look at it from head to toe as a silhouette. And I think this look is hot. And next up, one of the fiercest performers of this entire cast, Jax. So she didn't get a ton of screen time tonight, except when she got her snake look booted by a lot of the girls in the cast. And when she was highlighted for being nominated for the golden boot. And I'll say, even though some of her looks may not have been amazing, I think she did always look put together. And her look tonight has fully evolved to Jax. I love that giant beehive hair she's got going on and like the black and chocolate shades of crushed velvet in the look. It's very regal and understated, but so glamorous. And I think with this look, it's obvious Jax is working on redefining her look and drag overall. And this looks absolutely hot. And next up, Lux Noir London versus Trinity the Duck. So as a quick recap, you'll remember that Lux did an Amanda Lepore impersonation for Snatch Game. And during the episode, someone brought up to her that this character had been done before, but Lux was confident in redoing this character because the person that did the character in the past did not do a good job. That person was, of course, Trinity the Duck. And then after the episode aired, we saw Lux tweet out that, like, Liking and laughing at tweets about how her Lux's Snatch Game was horrible and how she's arrogant and delusional won't make yours, Trinity's, any more memorable or funnier. To which Trinity's final response on Twitter read, 11 wins, still waiting for at least one, done with this conversation. Which sets the stage for this past week of Twitter drama between these two. And from what I can tell, this feud was reignited by some tweets from Lux that read, I'd be rotted too if I wasted all that money to look like that. But good morning from America's sweetheart. Like, I'm sorry, but I really don't do anything, yet I'm always getting dust thrown my way. And all because I said you're safe performance was safe like 10 weeks ago shit girl please and then wants to preach about unity and peace like girl shut up and grow up at trinity the tech you only say quote i did great after people call you out for blatantly leaving me out or saying something shady towards me and it enables people to send me more hate i figure you'd know how this works seeing that you've been on the show like 10 times lux then clarified in another tweet writing at trinity the tech liking and responding to tweets saying that i'm a bad person and need to be humbled isn't shady because you definitely were doing that and then lux shared some screenshots of trinity the tech's 
Facebook's Twitter profile's likes where we see some tweets reading, if you ever have to work with her, call her TF out. I haven't seen this level in delusion from a queen in a while. She talks big game, but like, where's the big game? Crazy for Lux to say Trinity the Tuck bombed her first Nash game when she didn't even give us any jokes. You gotta pay respect to queens who paved the way first before being that annoyingly arrogant. For the record, Trinity slayed three out of her four Snatch game perfs. How about you? Hashtag Drag Race. I like Lux, but she could stand a little humility now and then. And then we see Trinity start to respond to Lux online writing, Sweets, I don't have to say you did great. You have a nasty attitude and that's why I haven't rooted for you. I never said you weren't a good queen. You have done great. I just don't like you. Now are we done? Okay, have a great night. And Trinity also later wrote, who said I didn't do that? Not me. I just said you have a nasty attitude. I also said you were great on Drag Race. And we also saw queens like Aquaria and Pheromone chime in on the topic where Aquaria replied to those tweeted screenshots writing, that first tweet is particularly odd. Like what type of square up and scrap are they trying to encourage at some potential future job? All over some rather mid impersonations. No way she thinks it's still that serious. And Farrah wrote, she loves to throw it, but can never take it herself. And after that transpired, Trinity on her profile tweeted, back to my international tour, dot, 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 kissy face. And then Lost tweeted out, should I make a Reddit account called They Angel Per Day to get the white twinks who hate me to like me again? Just leading after the example of my drag elders. It is, I think, worth noting someone else tweeted at Trinity writing, these fans are really gonna make you head of the quote, I hate Lux fan club and all you did was speak your truth. I'm so sorry, girl. And Trinity wrote, I don't even hate her. Hate is a very strong word. I do not condone any of this excess hate. You do not have to care for someone or like them. And you can even express that opinion without digging in dirty. But back to our regularly scheduled programming. At the reunion, Lux addresses the 40 inch wig gate again, a measurement of the wig she does not back down from, but does start to jokingly acknowledge that it was not 40 inches when she says things like, if you have a number over 35, round to the nearest 10. We also see a moment between her and Lucy where Lucy gets extremely emotional and says that it wasn't fair how Lux name checked her as generic and called her out individually as Lucy perceived it, not being as talented or having the star quality that everyone else in the lineup had on that fateful night when RuPaul asked each queen who should go home. And there isn't a ton of resolution between these two. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like not everybody has to be best friends, but it was, I think, nice to hear Lucy get to really express her true feelings on the reunion stage. But concerning Lux's look, her eternal confidence continues. She is wearing this really gorgeous pink dress that's a little slouchy, but very structured, asymmetrical, tight fitting. And there's a little bow in her hair because she's just so cute. I think she looks absolutely gorgeous in this. She's very much giving me like young, rich socialite meets housewife vibes. She's pretty in pink and this look is absolutely hot. Next up, Mistress Isabel Brooks versus Bob the Drag Queen. So you may have seen some tweets and some diss tracks dropped throughout the interwebs between these two this week, but spoiler alert, it is all in jest. And this all started earlier this week when Mistress tweeted out that it was quote, on site for Bob, referencing how Mistress doesn't like how Bob treats Monet on the Sibling Rivalry podcast. So tired of you gaslighting and bullying queens like Monet Exchange and I, well, you've met your match today. Drop that Addy. And then Bob tweeted out a picture of the twins from The Shining, writing me and Selena waiting to destroy you and Monet. Followed up with, if I wake up and this retweet has 15,000 likes, I'm dropping the Mistress Isabel Brooks diss track. And then that tweet did get the 15,000 likes. So Bob tweeted, okay, y'all asked for it. Mistress and I have agreed to drop our tracks on April 6th at 6 p.m. Pacific. And true to their promises, these two did drop their separate diss tracks on their YouTube channels. You can go listen to them. I've linked them in the description of this video. And I would be curious to know, who do you think won? and this is track extravaganza. Aside from the fake drama between Mistress and Bob, though, we did see Mistress acknowledge tons of real or show drama between queens on the show during the reunion. We've already talked about most of what she said, but this must have been 50% Mistress Isabel Brooks talking to RuPaul and making him giggle. And her look, true to Mistress, is super gorgeous. High drag, glamorous, but also has this kind of casual element to it with that hat and the chain that I really love and that purple color is super regal. And I also love that she was able to serve a look that was 100% true to her drag, yet also new and unique for her, and that she didn't necessarily need to do a silly or funny pop culture reference because she is the pop culture reference. This look is hot. And next up, Rue predicts that walking that duck will make her a millionaire. It's Anitra. And wow, you wanna talk about almost no camera time? Almost no camera time. But this was very true to who we know Anitra to be quiet, reserved, and lets her talent do the talking. Rue does get out of her though that her talent show was apparently the first time that she combined her martial arts and 
voguing or voguish skills, she calls them. And we've all even brought up all the online drama that's been going on surrounding Anitra with the voguing and noging situation. You know, we have seen all season long queens like Aja come for her for noging, and even people from the Legendary franchise call her out. I like though that Anitra was clearly not bothered by her being called out for all of this and remained confident in her answer and stance on the subject. Vogish or vogue or voguing or noging or not, I was entertained. Her look though tonight didn't really do it for me as much as some of her really phenomenal looks have. She's giving us like a pink t-shirt dress with harness straps covered in spikes. And that's all complete with like black sleeves and gloves and boots. And it definitely reads as Anitra with the spiky and sharp detailing. But something about this isn't feeling super cohesive to me, especially with that very refined, coiffed and stoned kind of pageanty hair paired with the more casualness of the look. So I'm gonna give this look a soft and finally, she's still your favorite drag queen's favorite drag queen. Bruce spends a whole segment talking about how he realized during this season how talented and amazing and perfect and beautiful and never been done before and flawless that Sasha Colby is. And there were several times during this season where RuPaul asked Sasha, like, have you done acting before? Have you done interviewing before? Have you done music videos before? And what I think everyone watching and RuPaul herself took away from this season was that Sasha was just a natural talent at everything she does. And her look here tonight is gorgeous, a flawless victory. It's effortless in a way I think that only Sasha Colby beauty can be. She took something simple like a sheer dancy bodysuit and turned it into like crystallized gown dripping from the front and the back. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. This look is absolutely hot. And as far as hottest hats go for the reunion looks, I'm gonna give it to Sugar and Spice combined. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hats this week and they voted for Irene Dubois. And finally, I wanna say thanks so much to you for watching today's video and I want to give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart, Daniel Sendez, Felicia, Frankie Jeffrey, Callan730, Laura The Set, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Matthew Burns, Matto, Panda Kitty, Sailor, Steven Topher, Tyler Hendricks MD, really, and Will and Tanner who all supported me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier over at patreon.com. Love ya, bye.